Article 50 has been triggered. So what happens next? In the next 48 hours, the European Council President, Donald Tusk, will be writing to all remaining 27 member states, informing them of his response to Theresa May. By the end of April, there'll be an emergency summit of all 27 EU leaders, without the UK, to agree to give the Commission a mandate to negotiate with the United Kingdom. The conclusion reached at the emergency summit will be summarised and drawn up by Michael Barnier, the EU chief negotiator. Talks in earnest between the UK and the EU are expected to start later in the month. But there might be a few spanners in the works. France is expected to have its presidential elections on the 7th of May. The EU might not be in a position to start talks without an elected French president. The same is expected in Germany. Will Angela Merkel still be the country's chancellor after its elections at the end of September? Until that question is answered, no agreement will be possible. The next key date will be in 2018. The UK will need to give the House of Commons and the House of Lords time to ratify any agreements made, and the EU will need to do the same for its European Parliament and other institutions. So October 2018 will be a key moment to have completed negotiations. And this is the big day, the 29th of March 2019. By then, the UK will have to leave the EU. Hopefully, a transitional deal will be in place to avoid a disaster scenario. Many experts agree that it could take a lot longer than two years of negotiations to reach their conclusion, given that any of the 27 countries can veto the final deal, including Spain. And there are plenty of questions still unanswered. What happens if a deal isn't reached by the time the deadline comes around? Under Article 50, an extension can be granted, but all 27 members need to agree on this unanimously. Does the UK need a deal? Not in principle. It can literally just walk away. But that means all its trade and political deals with the EU countries will vanish overnight. And what part will Gibraltar play in the negotiations? Junior Brexit Secretary Robin Walker says it's high up on the agenda and considered part of the British family. But in her mission statement on Brexit in January, the Prime Minister didn't mention the rock, even though she highlighted the island border. And the UK has made it very clear it won't enter into arrangements or talks with which Gibraltar isn't happy. However, let's not forget, Spain has a veto over the final deal. And its Foreign Secretary has said... The only way for Gibraltar to have a post-Brexit relationship with the EU would be through a bilateral deal between Britain and Spain.